This startling photograph was taken at the grave of the poet Yeats in Ireland. And this one at a cemetery in America. But mostly, ghosts are not seen, they are heard. A ghost is often heard here in the dormitory of a boys' school in New England. Converted from an old family mansion, the school is said to be haunted by the spirit of a young woman who died on her wedding day. Did you hear that? Ray, can you hear that? Oh, leave me alone. Occasionally, one of the students claims to have seen the ghost. is based on the premise that energy and matter cannot be destroyed, only transformed. The same premise supports the theory of reincarnation. At the University of Virginia, where Dr. Ian Stevenson is studying reincarnation, there is evidence that we do return to Earth time and again in other bodies. Edgar Cayce believed this, and Taylor Caldwell's novels are said to be based on the knowledge of her past lives. Mozart's childhood musical genius is attributed to his having lived a former life as a musical artist. Other geniuses like Benjamin Franklin and Mark Twain believed they were reincarnates. And general George Patton believed he was a great general because he had been a military man in a past life. Researchers validate the accounts of reincarnation by checking out the details of the regressed person's previous life against the documented facts of that life. For instance, in one case in India, researchers verified a young girl's memory of a past life by finding money she said she had concealed in a town she had never visited or even known about in this life. Another way to validate reincarnation is by going back well, in time through I've hypnosis. I've been hypnotized many different times during my lifetime. And, Roger uh, Doyle. During these sessions, I regressed, of course, into a different life. As a matter of fact, many different lives. Uh, I think one of the most interesting, perhaps, was as a Spanish soldier uh, during the 16th century uh, with Cortez. <laughs> knowledge of the Spanish conquistador's conquest of Mexico as remembered under hypnosis was complete and detailed. His recall of the habits of both the coastal and central Mexican Indians was that either of a scholar or of someone who had been there. In another period of hypnosis and during regression, of course, I discovered that I had been killed. And it occurred after Montezuma's death and during the time that the Aztec warriors were warring on us and driving us out of Mexico City. Fantasy, dream, or the product of a fertile imagination. Stories like Roger Doyle's can be either. Or they can be what they say they are. Actual accounts of the adventures of past lives. 
The mysteries of the world of psychic phenomena are many. They stagger the conventional imagination. Yet with each passing year, stories we thought were bizarre, like Roger Doyle's tale of marching and fighting with Cortez, become commonplace. The strange and the unknown are becoming the familiar. The shroud of mystery is falling away. Acceptance of psychic phenomena is growing. Belief in it has grown as the evidence for it has grown. For many, this evidence is absolute proof that these psychic powers do exist. Most of the skeptics now agree that at least some of these strange and mysterious forces exist in all of us. Men of science now tell us that we are indeed different beings than we thought we were. We are, they say, psychic beings. And if we're not afraid to push back the boundaries of our ignorance, if we learn to channel our latent powers, we might be able to alter the future in a way that we now can only imagine. We might perhaps think of communicating across the great barren stretches of outer space using telepathy. We might even solve the mystery of time and teletransportation and move freely from planet to planet, galaxy to galaxy. We are indeed different beings than we thought we were. We are energy made of the same stuff as the stars. We are energy and we are forever.